So this video is going to teach you how to do uh, a movement called shoulder clots. And this is the second movement in um, this five minute sequence called the clock workout in my book, Feel Better in Five. Now, again, the clock is a concept Gary has um, sort of used with your clients and, and when you're teaching to really help us very simplistically start to access more and more movements and, and really uh, remind our bodies actually the range of movement that actually is available to it, yet in modern life uh, we don't really access it. And I've got to say, Gary, I love all your movements, but this one is a particular favourite of mine. And I think that's because I'm so tall, I think for years I have been a bit rounded with my posture, it's something I'm working very hard on. Um, and I feel, I feel like my shoulders, I feel like at the end of this, they've really opened up. So what, what is, what is the, the, the idea behind the shoulder clocks? Uh, well, simply the shoulders are very, um, they're a ball and socket joint. They've got a huge amount of mo range of motion available. Uh, the scapula, your shoulder blade is attached at one corner. So the whole thing has this full three dimensionality, almost 360 degrees of possibility. Um, and we don't use them as well as we yeah. could. So. Again, we're touching on old ground, but the, just being in a, in, a, in a desk posture or a, a forward head posture pulls your shoulders into one half of its movement potential and gets stuck there, thereby losing all of its movement potential. Um, we have a lot of shoulder problems, a lot of limitations in uh, muscle tightness at the top, muscle weakness at the back, um, and to, to explore them. Um, in which we have explored in many of these yeah. videos, actually. I like what you said, said about them getting stuck because I really like the idea that this movement and many of your movements actually, um, they, they sort of give us freedom. And instead of being stuck, we, we remind our brains what it feels like when we put all our joints and muscles in different positions. And I guess this one is focused primarily on the shoulders, but yeah. it does move other things as well, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah, freedom's an interesting word, isn't it? Because there's, there are limitations to our movement, even, but we, we've limited them so much, we want to be able to move inside the container that is supposed to move in. So, the, as I said, the shoulders have got such range. What if we can actually experience that range and explore that movement freely in our body? And, and this movement in particular, um, and the idea of using the clock and reaching around all the numbers is going to—it's going to draw. We'll see when we when we do it, but it will draw your arms into certain positions, which will pull your upper body into certain okay. positions, which will shift your hips into certain positions, and none of them are to be dictated. You just. You're going to reach your hand out to the clock point and let the rest of your structure just follow and go where it wants to go. Um, but one thing's for sure, as you've explored each clock point with both hands, your body will have explored spaces that it's not used to going to well, let's, every let's day. Well, let's get on with the movement yeah. to show people what it looks like. Um, now, I am really, really tall, so yeah. <laughs> you've got to reach out. So I'll tell you what I actually do to actually mitigate that a bit later. But let's start in the more standard position, which is yeah. standing up. Stand up, right. Close to the wall. Um, not too close to the wall uh, and not too far away. So I guess you find your com comfortable position. Hands on. Um, so hands on the wall, you, you're about a, a forearm's step back. Um, and then I'll just point, point the clock out for you like we have before, but 12 is gonna be straight above Rangan's head, six between his feet, three out to the right and nine out to the left. Okay, so shall I just start? Go for it. So okay. we're gonna take each hand, right hand leading and left hand following. Uh, just do that one again, we'll just go straight back in, just go to a nice reach, reach to the end of your movement and you'll see the shape change in his spine and then as he get, comes down and experiences the other, you're going to see the opposite shape change in his spine. So heading out to number one, what we'll do here, which is different to the lunge clock, is go to one, come back and then the left hand will also go to one and you can see that each one is a completely different body position. Number two, and so he'll incorporate some twist. This is why we don't want to be too close to the wall because he can incorporate some twist in the rib cage. Now three, it's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, again, just reach as far as you can. You're going to reach as far as you can. You're not going to fall over because your muscles the, will do what they need to do to pull you back. You're going to reach under, back of the hand to the wall, another nice twist. Notice how he's just bent his knees, just letting his body just go to do whatever it needs to do in order to find these, <laughs> these points. I guess, um, Common mistakes would be somebody trying to stay upright and just moving their hand without allowing their body to follow that, that reach. so good, honestly. 
Six, sometimes six between your legs is quite tricky, but you just have to navigate that wall, which again just means yeah. clever movement. And again, it just remind, I think, a good reminder is that sometimes you're using the back of your hand, depending on what that movement is, and you, you just start to push your body into different positions that you're yeah. not used to feeling. And, there's, and you could, those back of the hand ones, you might turn your arm around and do with the front of the hand, just for a different experience at, at a different clock point. It's nine o'clock. Yeah, ten. Nearly there. And it looks like he's not doing a lot, standing still, but you can already hear Rongan's breath change, breathing has changed. And That's it's 12. good, nice mobility work for the scapula at the shoulders. Guys, I've got to say, it's, it's such a lovely movement to do. It feels really good. You know, if you've been conditioned to thinking exercise or movement is, is punishing, and it's not designed to be enjoyable. Well, I hope my approach, Gary's approach in general, helps to reframe that for you. But this one in particular, it's really enjoyable. You feel really great afterwards. Now, for anyone who is super tall watching this, yep. and there's not that many people who are as tall as me, uh, or people who live with low ceilings, what I do, because often I can't actually reach that high, I just actually get down onto my knees, and I do the first part of the movement like this. So even in this case, you reach as far as you can, and you still have to let the body go. You still see a, a movement in the hips, you still see a movement. So it might be advisable to do this on a yoga mat or something, make sure your knees are comfortable on the ground. And then for six o'clock up, and I jump up then just to sort of finish it off. And you know, you can go the whole way around like that. So you know, a, a key point for me also is to say, don't look for excuses not to do this, okay? All Brilliant. of these movements, um, you know, you don't need any equipment, okay? Um, you don't really need to get change. You know, I've got people, as you, as you do, people doing it, and then regular clothes, jeans and t-shirts, yeah. uh, and the office clothes that they used to do it at work. And if, you know, you have limitations with the ceiling, well, just be a bit inventive and go on your knees, and that's what I do. So, Gary, that's the second movement in that three movement sequence that we call the clock workout. It is. Um, any, any other sort of final comments on that? I was just thinking, um Really, it's, it kind of redefines that idea of stretching. So we're stretching muscles by reaching into the far, you know, corners of the clock. Um, but it's, if you think about every single angle and the amount of muscles, it's not a single plane of stretch. It's not the same stretch every time. You're gonna to start to experience these muscles stretching here, and then on this angle, and then on this angle, this angle. So you target so many, and of course, it's not just a muscle but we've, you, you're gonna be stretching the, the, the muscles on the front, the back, the side, yeah. the arms, the even down, all the way down to the hips and the abs, just by following your arms around. So again, it's, it, we call it shoulder clocks, but it's definitely a whole body movement, yeah. uh, which is reduced somewhat if you go on your knees, but you know, it's, it's... And I accept that, you know, it, it does reduce things somewhat, but again, as I say, don't look for reasons not to do it. You'll still get benefit if you do it with your knees on the floor. Huge amount of movement going on, yeah, absolutely. whether you're on your knees or not. So that's the second one, guys, out of three. You can go to the final video now to actually uh, see that final movement, which is the cold clock.